right, there is another. There's another. There's another one too. Two critical things here are gonna be the time of year, late October, November, even into December are probably gonna be your best times. And then where? So if you're not at the right spot at the right time, you know, you're not gonna find Matsuchaki. If you watch my other video, I talk about starting up higher in elevation the mushrooms will fruit earlier. So you want to start up higher and then start working your way down in elevation as the year goes on. So that's why I can maybe give you some like general areas on the map too where you know we've had success Matsutake hunting. So you got the you got the when and you got the where. Those are going to be the critical things. You can see the type of area that I'm in. I look at my other video too. Uh, not deep old growth. Uh, not this isn't even like a logged area. I think maybe there was a burn. Uh, the other thing too I would look for is stuff like this. You want to area with some undergrowth not just completely easy to walk around and then the why so that's this is an important thing right these matsutakes are just they're really good eating i think besides morels these are going to be our favorite mushroom uh it's just like we keep on finding more ways we want to eat them you know in rice you know which can go with a lot of different dishes you just put in the rice cooker um we're doing dumplings now too like a chinese style dumpling we do hot pots so i got i got a video out with a hot pot you can eat a lot of different varieties that way um you know check it out you know like this time i've been out here for an hour we found a couple little ones and then i, I get to this, this batch here and yeah the way i found it was someone had already been here look at you can see this see that gray so someone had been here and they picked the matsutake other people can give you tips, you know, just by leaving some holes or you see a bunch of you move dirt, you know, mark those spots. That's um, that's part of Matsutake hunting. It's like I said, there's this one spot here where I saw one was taken and then I brushed aside a little bit more. Look at that. We got some more little eggs in here. One, two, three. Right. And then, yeah, I look a little more closely. Look, at, it probably doesn't look like anything, right? But then look at this. You can see a little bit now. I'm gonna move that. I'll move this. Oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> Another one. So three there. And then I noticed, look at this too. Looks like another. Oh, maybe not. Maybe nothing there. But I will take these. One, two, one, two, three, four. Four there. Three down at the other spot. So let me show you this technique if you didn't see my other video where I was showing this. Uh, the matsutake, as you can tell, they, they look like uh, little eggs kind of. They got that white, you know, that white appearance with a little bit of brown in there. Um, you can smell them. It's, that's a big thing about matsutake, they smell great. And there's a, there's a different way you can identify too. And you go to remove them and it's really hard to remove them. And the stem doesn't break. So you look, I'm really wrenching on this thing now. Stems don't break. And then the whole mushroom just comes out. And then you look underneath, you see that? It's got this gray kind of a soil. If I run across a white mushroom and the stem breaks, I know it's not a matsutake. These are the super nice ones here. They still got that veil attached. So personally, when I smell them, I smell red hots or I smell cinnamon or pine. Some people will tell you that they smell like gym socks or something like that. I don't, I don't know, I don't get that. Matsutake is an Asian word, and that means pine mushroom. So it's more of a translation than it is just like a, a general, you know, like, oh, they kind of smell like pine or something. Here, so I got these here. Okay, there are some really nice ones. We got, this is the fun part, right? Oh, look at that, that's beautiful. Look at it, it's still got the veil intact underneath for this size of a mushroom. Isn't that nice? Aren't these great? All right, here's another. There's another. There's another one too. So in this one spot, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. Pretty cool. So here's a pretty nice batch of white chanterelles. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with white chanterelles, but they're a lot like a golden chanterelle, almost identical as far as the uh, taste and the texture. But they're they're a white color. You can see one here. So let me show you underneath. 
same thing you look for underneath. You look for those fake gills. See how it's, it's just more like fold in the skin. There we go. And uh, another thing about these two is they tend to come out a little bit earlier than the golden chanterelles. So early in the year, you know, even like September type of time frame, we'll kind of start looking for the white chanterelles first because they'll come out a couple weeks before the golden chanterelles. And uh, here we have it's a batch of about four of them here. So here you go. They're very nice mushrooms. So we, we really like to fry these. Um, they're just, they're really good. You put like a, you know, a tempura type of a fry on these. Maybe sprinkle a little bit of salt on it afterwards. Uh, you can even dip them in butter. And it's got this, this really soft texture, almost like seafood. And uh, another interesting thing too is these will, they'll hybrid with the golden chanterelles. So sometimes you'll see chanterelles are a little bit like a cross between a white chanterelle and a golden chanterelle. So yeah, it's pretty cool. This is actually November. So I'm still finding nice white chanterelles in November this year. So here's another mushroom. Um, I don't think I've gotten one of my videos before, but this is uh, chicken of the woods. It's got a great name, doesn't it? Um, this is going to be like a little bit past prime, but uh, the way you can tell it's got this orange, kind of like it's, uh, I guess it's a, it's a polypore, it's um, on the trees, always going on a tree. It's going to be a dead tree too. Yeah, it's got the orange flavor, or the orange color to it, it's kind of stacked in these things. And uh, yeah, I've had it before and I think one of the, one of the tricks with this is you probably want to cook it for quite a while because if you cook it just uh, really quickly, it tends to be more bitter. I'm, we're already into November here. And oftentimes when I'm picking uh, chicken of the woods, it's probably going to be like, you know, even August or September. Uh, look, at these are some old ones. So if you ever see these on the tree, they're kind of white, they're breaking. Um, you'll know that that's an old chicken of the woods. So maybe next year, if you want to go up there earlier. Uh, yeah, it's a good indicator. So. Yeah, just I don't know if that's something I've talked about, but it's got a great name, doesn't it? Chicken of the Woods. You see these dug up areas? And, you know, I'm not sure if it's other people doing it or if it's animals. And these are like broken up pieces of them. And it makes me think maybe it's animals doing this. So I don't know if, if you if you're smarter about this than I am. Let me know in the comments. So I am up in my Matsutake mushroom area. And um, this is something you got to come to expect when you go matsutake hum hunting. Let's look down in here. See that, that gray soil at the stem, right? Look at these, these pieces in here. It's matsutake. And you can just tell this whole area has been dug up. It's fairly discouraging, right? Because you'd rather, you know, not, someone else not get there before you. But it's, it's something you can learn from. For one thing, you're learning of a matsutake spot. And for another thing, look at this. See, there's one there. Oh, look at, there's another one there. So this is what happened to uh, me and my wife last weekend too. You know, our spot had been picked, but we would see these areas where it's disturbed and then we would carefully look around there. And a lot of times we would uncover just a little bit more ground and then boop, here you go. A lot of times people miss these. So yeah, here's a couple, a couple nice ones. Like I said, recognize the areas that someone else has picked or uh, the animals or whatever it is out here.